Welcome back to the NFL Prop Shop, week number four for September 29th, the last Sunday in September. The time is flying, and I'm joined with our new face for the NFL Prop Shop, our man Spenny Penny Bombs, on a little needed vacation. So I brought in the flamethrower to the bookies himself, Fanatical Jim. Welcome into the NFL Prop Shop. How are you, my friend? Do well, Mike. Appreciate you having me. And look, I understand I have some big shoes to fill tonight. Spenny has been on fire. You guys have been on fire for the show. So I appreciate you having me on. And and look, because I have those big, big shoes to fill, I'm going to be throwing some bombs out there. I'm going to take that man's last name up and I'll try to fit that mold. So looking forward to working with you today and getting some cash, hopefully after the show. Well, I'm very excited. We came off a big week last week, so there's no pressure, but we had a nice five and one. Uh, cashed everything but one of those big bomb touchdown props. And uh, away we go. So the way the show works, as you guys know, uh, we'll give out two props each. We'll wrap the show up with a parlay. Let's open up Fanatical Jim. Again, welcome, my friend. And uh, let's talk about this first play that you have in the NFL. Sure, Mike. So first play will be on the Raiders. And as we're shooting this, a lot of news is kind of breaking in terms of injuries. And we just found out that Devontae Adams and Max Crosby will be ruled out. Um, of this Raiders game. And on the other side with the Browns, there's a ton of injuries as well. But my prop here will be on Alexander Madison. Um, and it's going to be an anytime touchdown. So I'm going to walk through some of the reasons why. And, and really the main reason is his, he's he fits the zone run that Pierce and the Raiders want to implement. You know, you see Zamir White and he he constantly runs into his own players. He really can't figure out how to do cuts properly. And he was really good last year. But he he's he was in the power uh, power um, run zone last year. Now it's it's the zone run, so it's a little bit different. And Madison is taking his sna- his snaps. He's going from twenty two percent in week two to forty four percent last week. I only expect that to increase. The Browns are basically middle of the middle of the pack uh, in terms of run stop. They've allowed three touchdowns in the past three games. They're banged up. They have three defensive linemen injured. They have two linebackers injured, including Miles Garrett. And Madison has scored a touchdown in every single game this year. Uh, he's the goal line back. So I, I, I saw on social media where people had Zamir, Zamir White in their fantasy lineups. And it's like, wait, wait a minute. Why is Madison getting the goal line work? I thought, I, I thought Zamir White was the guy. No, Madison's the guy. And he's, he scored. Like I said, he scored three straight touchdowns. And it wasn't just running. Week one, he caught a red zone pass for a touchdown. So you're getting not only goal line back, you're getting a guy that can catch the ball. And by the way, I'd mentioned Devontae Adams is out. They're going to be passing more. So if you want to look at his reception props, um, I'm probably going to be looking myself. But here's the main reason. I'm getting plus 330 on FanDuel with Madison to score a touchdown. As I said, he's scored in every game this year. And FanDuel is going to give me a plus 330 on that. When I look at DraftKings, DraftKings is giving you a plus 190. DraftKings is giving you odds that actually Zamir White has worse odds than Madison on scoring a touchdown, but FanDuel White has better odds. Um, so it, this is just, you know, it's, it's a lot of uh, um, opportunity here to, to get a, a decent score to plus 330 and a guy that is going to get the goal line work. He's going to get his opportunity to score a touchdown. I just can't pass up the price. So give me Alexander Madison to score at any time touchdown at plus 330. Alexander Madison certainly coming in with the bombs. Excited to hear that. Certainly did your research. Wouldn't expect anything less, and uh, I love to see that plus money price. So, let's kick the show off with that big bomb, and let's move on. I'm going to cover. I'm going to go a little different here. Last week, I gave you guys a quarterback prop. It was a nice plus one seventy five spot. I'm going to go back to a quarterback prop this week, uh, but a little different angle with this one. I'm going to go to C.J. Stroud and uh, this Houston Texans offense. I'm looking at his over two hundred sixty five and a half passing yards. Uh, kind of looking to pick on this team and. The Jaguars specifically, obviously we saw last week, right? The Buffalo Bills roasted and toasted that Jaguars team. Uh, What we saw from Josh Allen, uh, no bueno when it came to going out there. No problem when it came to going out there, um, you know, with that secondary in the Jaguars. And, uh, you know, he only played about a half of football, but he put up 263 yards himself. A perfect five for five in first half possessions to touchdown ratios. And uh, history here. C.J. Stroud, two games last year against um, those Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, he had 292 passing yards per game. Um, certainly should be capable of getting the 265 and a half. I'm going to take a little ladder fun with this as well. 275 
plus is going to be a nice plus 105 spot. And it moves all the way up plus 210 to get the over 300 or 300 plus passing yards. So taking a little cheap shot here at this defense going to CJ Stroud. Uh, let me get the over 265 and a half passing yards. Fanatical Jim, what do you think? I think it's a great move. I think with, uh, you know, with that environment, with the way the Jaguars have looked against quarterbacks right now, I mean, yeah, that's that's a great look. And I I think with, you know, with Tank Dell out, you're going to see a lot of targets go to Nico Collins. You're going to see a lot of targets go to Stephon Diggs. And they're going to be throwing the ball a lot. I mean, to your point, Cam Makers is just not doing it. So Stroud will get plenty of opportunity to rack those yards up. So I love that play. Well, let's keep her moving. I'm excited to hear about your next spot. <clears throat> well, yeah, and, and I'm excited to put this one out there because I think it's pretty unique. Um, and it's Kareem Hunt. So you might say, wait a minute, Kareem Hunt, is he still in the league? Yes, he's actually in the league. He got signed to the Chiefs practice squad in week two, and he's been elevated to play this week against the Los Angeles Chargers. So wait a minute, why elevate him? You have Steele. You have P. Ryan. What, what do you need Kareem Hunt for? Well, I'll tell you why I need him. Seven tries in the red zone in week three against, uh, what was it, the Bengals? Seven tries in the red zone. Zero running touchdowns, including a interception and a field goal that happened in the red zone. Um, so that's just not going to cut it, right? Mahomes just can't do it by himself always. Um, he has to, you know, run the ball. Pacheco could get into the end zone, and the other guys can't. Carson Steele runs into his own players. He is basically a fullback. Um, he just runs extremely straight. And I mean, that'll work once in a while, but for 17 carries, no. Pirine, receiving back, yeah, he can get a couple of carries. But Kareem Hunt is going to be the goal line back, in my opinion. Um, that's why they're calling him up. He, he's going to get his opportunities to score. If you looked at last year, Kareem Hunt had 11 touchdowns for the Cleveland Browns, including the playoffs. He was their goal line back. Now, he had like three yards per carry last year, but he still had 11 touchdowns. That's all this matters. And, and I should tell you, I'm on Kareem Hunt anytime touchdown. Uh, and, and I'll give you that, that line in a second, but that's what, that's what I'm looking at here. I think he's going to be the Chiefs goal line back, and that's why they're bringing him up. The other reason why, Kareem Hunt in the last two games versus the Chargers have scored three touchdowns, both running and receiving. You're looking at a Chargers team that has no Bosa, that has no German James, that has no Colson, that has no Taylor, four defensive starters missing. They're in shambles here. And you know Mahomes is going to get a lot of deep opportunities to get into the red zone, and I feel like that's where Kareem Hunt's really going to shine. Once again, here's the kicker. Kareem Hunt on FanDuel, I'm getting plus 360 anytime touchdown. You know, Now, if he is the third running back on this team, well, this should be a hell of a lot more than plus 360. And I'll tell you what, DraftKings has a plus 220. Give me a third running back on a team that has a plus 220 odds to score an anytime touchdown. You know, I'll wait. I mean, find <laughs> that. You know, so he's not the damn third running back. He's going to be a guy that's going to get opportunities. And I love him in this spot. I think there's going to be points in this game, the, the Chiefs and Chargers, even though Herbert's a little banged up. I still think they're going to be points there. Um, I, like I said, I like Mahomes moving the ball with no Bosa, no James. We've seen that defense collapse previously with, with Bosa and James missing. You know, the Chargers cannot stop a lot of these teams and, and Chiefs being one of them. So I really like this play in terms of, of value. I feel like um, this line will probably get worse as the weeks go on unless, you know, we get Pacheco back. But for now, Kareem Hunt plus 360 on FanDuel anytime touchdown. Sign me up. That's the that's my second prop here. Love it. Love to hear the goal line back looks there. Uh, great price tags on him as well. Taking the flyer out a nice little plus 360 cash action out there. I'm going to go to a touchdown prop as well for my second prop of the show. And uh, I'm going to go back to these New Orleans Saints. You know, a lot of times you study these teams and you kind of figure out what makes up their DNA. And I'll talk a little bit about that with the parlay piece as well. But as far as some of these teams are concerned, and looking at this New Orleans Saints offense, kind of figuring some things out with these touchdown props and who they're going to go to spots are. Right now, you talked earlier about banged up status, and that kind of feels like the the, the rhythm here or the rhyme of week four is who's going to play, who's not going to play. And I think there's very much that conversation being had. It's a huge divisional game between the Saints and the Falcons. We know the Falcons had that big win against my Eagles, but back to or a separate a two week losses in there as well. Two losses in there as well is what I'm trying to say. And uh, because I'm looking at this offense with the Saints, I see Alvin Kamara's banged up. 
I see Olave, who gave us that touchdown prop last week, is banged up. Well, I got to go back to Rashid Shaheed. Guy's got two touchdowns already this season. He's priced at plus 200. And uh, I'm going to try to get in and out of this one. Give me a quick touchdown from New Orleans Saints. Rashid Shaheed, plus 200, anytime touchdown. I think that's good money. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, and, you, and you're playing the narrative, right, of Shahid was barely looked at last week. <laughs> and that's always the famous and popular play in, in fantasy, right, or, or in uh, DFS, is always go back to the guy that's been overlooked. And you know he's just going to come in. So that's a great look. And, uh, and yeah, they're playing a team that I think that there's going to be points scored. And Shahid has, will have plenty of opportunities to get some deep looks. So I love that play. Divisional battle. They got to be up for it. They got to get that <laughs> W. And uh, speaking of getting the W here, we had a nice parlay last week. It's the portion of the show. We're each going to give you guys either a side or a total in the NFL games on Sunday. We got ourselves this week a nice little plus 256 parlay. We punched it in already to figure out the numbers. Uh, why don't you open us up, Jim? Talk to us about the first leg of the parlay. Sure. So my first leg will be the New York Jets minus seven and a half minus 110. Um, so this is a pretty simple one for me. You know, with the New York Jets, they're playing the Denver Broncos. So if you remember last year, the Denver Broncos and in particular, Sean Payton, threw Nathaniel Hackett under the bus. And Nathaniel Hackett is the offensive coordinator for the Jets. Um, you know, basically called him stupid, basically calls him the reason why the Broncos struggle on offense. And, you know, and whether or not you believe it, it still stung, right? It stung not only him, but the Jets organization. Now, the Jets went out and won by 10 last year against the Broncos with Zach Wilson as a quarterback. A lot of that has to do with Brees Hall. Um, and, you know, Brees Hall has owned the Broncos the last two years. If you look at what he's done, he has scored touchdowns on, on a 70-yard run and I believe a 64-yard run. Uh, when one of those games he tore his ACL. But in uh, last year, he went for 170 yards on 30-something carries. You know, the Broncos have difficulty this year stopping the run, too. So I expect a lot of Brees Hall. But what I will say about the Jets is Aaron Rodgers has a long memory, even though he comes off as uh, – idiotic sometimes on some of his <laughs> interviews. Uh, he does have a very long memory and he will remember what Hackett said. I'm sorry, what Peyton said about Hackett. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think it's going to be the same narrative this week uh, as it was last year. We're going to be putting points on it. We're not going to stop. And Bo Nix is going to be fat and happy here coming off his win. You know, oh, we got a rookie to win. It, we got a great showing against the Bronc, uh, the uh, Buccaneers. Now we're going to go against the Jets. Yeah, this is going to be, to me, just a game where they're not going to show up. Bo Nix is going to look lost, deer in the headlights, and Aaron Rodgers is going to slam the gas pedal to put up a lot of points on this team. And Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, they're all going to come through. I think minus seven and a half. That's one of those looks everybody's going to be like, oh, plus seven and a half on the Broncos. Yeah, no, no, it's it's going to be it's going to be a drudging in my opinion. So give me the minus seven and a half on the Jets. It is seven and a half for a reason. I love that Aaron Rodgers does strike me as that guy that wants to. Uh, he keeps score for a long time. He doesn't forget, and uh, then he wants to stick it every time he gets the opportunity. So I love that open up look. I'm going to take a look at this team we talked about last week in Miami. You know, we talked last week about uh, Thompson not going to get a touchdown pass. You know, the big reason that I'm picking apart this Miami team has a lot to do with the fact that without Tua, who was out there and leading the league at the fastest, um, you know, snap to pass ratio in the NFL, uh, exposed a lot of teams because he was just so darn quick getting rid of that ball and moving it around the field. Now you bring in Thompson. I mean, the guy got pretzeled and, and crushed at the uh, second half of that game and couldn't finish. Now they've got Huntley coming in there as well, and there's this merry-go-round at the quarterback process. Um, you know, the question is going to be who's next man up for this team. And on the other side, I'm looking at Will Levis and this Tennessee Titans team. Uh, guy's got a ton of – he's got, what, a five to eight touchdown to turnover ratio right now, and he just can't seem to find the right color jersey to toss the ball to. Three weeks, they've got a 17-point finish, a 17-point finish, and a 14-point finish. Miami last week, talk about not scoring, three points on the board. This is a low number at 36 and a half, but I'm taking it. It's low for a reason. Uh, these teams are going to have to show me that they got any semblance at all of putting the ball in the end zone before I start playing on them, and uh, that's going to do it. That's going to give us an under 36 and a half Miami Dolphins game. New York Jets minus seven and a half. And again, we got a nice plus 256 price tag for it. Jim, I appreciate you coming and rocking with us this week, my friend. Thank you. You're always welcome to be a part of the NFL Prop Shop. And I'm excited to spend some time on Saturday with the uh, UFC Paris card. Tell the people what you're up to, where they can find you. You can find me on X at, at Fanatical Jim. Um, and yeah, it's I'm really looking forward to this weekend. We have a bunch of college action. We have that big UFC Paris card, card to your point. 
And we have a bunch of NFL on Sunday. So you can't get much better than that. A lot of betting opportunity, a lot of opportunity to make some cash. I'm looking forward to, to, to being on screen with you guys uh, in the coming days. Thank you guys very much. Enjoy your weekends. Good luck with your week four football from Sports Money for Fanatical Gym. Appreciate everybody. Good luck. Get that cash. Thank you guys. 